You're listening to the world's smartest podcast network. When I go to Sacramento, I will pump up Sacramento. 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 Some say the news is fake. Others say it's real. These two don't have the time to check. Instead, Turner Sparks and Michael Ira Kaplan turn to comics stationed around the globe to be their eyewitness reporters so that you can know what's really going on. This is Lost in America. All right, everybody, welcome to Lost in America, episode 230. Whoa. Am I right? Are we at I don't know. Let's go with it. 230. <laughs> Let's go with it. My name's Just Turner Sparks. With me, Sir Michael Ira Kaplan. Uh, you can find me at Turner Sparks on Instagram, turnersparks.com. Buy my album, Turner Sparks, live from the Friars Club. Go to my website. I'm going on tour later this year, September, October, November, all over the United States of America, as long as there's not a fourth or fifth wave or whatever mm. one we're on right now. So go get tickets to all those. I'll be in Las Vegas. I will be with Tom Rhodes. I'll be in. And it'll be uh, totally open. I'll be in the Bay Area in Alameda, California, Alameda Comedy Club. I'll be at the Sacramento Punchline all over the place. Get tickets. Kaplan is K. You can find him at Cap in America on Instagram, on all social medias, platforms, Twitter, everything, Twitter and everything. What other one? What's besides everything? Twitter, Uh, Peloton bike. I'm a biker, Peloton biker. And uh, am I on Clubhouse or Parlor yet? I'm not, but I'm working on it. Is that still a thing? I think that's over, both of those, but... I don't know if Parlor still exists. Uh, right, well, we'll have to do some recon. We'll, we'll do fu- some re- for yeah. next week. We'll let for you next know. week. I'll get on them yeah. on the podcast today. Coming up in a few minutes, we have Oleg Denisov back on the show. He is our friend from Moscow, stand-up comedian, owner of the Steal the Show Comedy Club, SteelTheShow dot net, owner of a comedy club in Moscow, which we have vowed we will get to at some point and do a live show. We are from coming there when we're, when we're number one in Russia. Or number one in Crimea or number one in somewhere we're going to be. Uh, or just, you know, I, we'll take Belarus, Belarus, the Poland. future Russia. We'll take whatever is needed, you know, for us to get there. Ukraine. But, or we'll just go. Who cares? Anyway, he'll be on in yep. a minute. We're talking about Putin and all the things. So we we have him on. We have Oleg on about every 10 or 12 episodes because every yeah. 10 or 12, every two or three weeks, Putin does something insane. And we're like, well, we just had Oleg on two weeks ago. We can't have him back immediately. Yeah, we and then wait we for wait, the next wait, insane wait, thing. And we pile <laughs> up all the insane things and then we do it. So we're doing it again uh, today. I can't wait to have him on and find out more about all the craziness. But Kaplan, before that. Yeah. Patreon. Here's the mm. deal. We have more listeners than ever in the uh, history of Lost in America. On Lost in America. Either yeah. listening to this show or viewing this show on YouTube, listening to us, viewing us on Twitch. Uh, but our listenership, our podcast listenership is higher than ever. Yet, we have the exact same. I think we have one less Patreon subscriber this month than we had last month. So we need to get those numbers up. I've thought of a new plan. I hope you got a new plan because right now I'm very disappointed in our in our freeloading listeners on Lost in America. Freeloading listeners? Bunch of ingrates is what Even if you don't like us, give us five bucks a month. You know? I mean, I, I, you, you've, I, I'm sitting here in my kid's bedroom because I don't even have a podcast studio. But next, I'm going to be homeless in two months. I don't have a Cap, job. Kaplan me- has a 76ers <laughs> mini hoop basketball net behind him. Yeah. He has a dartboard. He's in a child sports bar right now, <laughs> waiting to do, wait, because waiting on uh, to build a to build a comedy. I mean, a podcast studio. These other podcasts, you know. You got the Are You Garbage guys. They got enough money on Patreon to build their own podcast studio. Do you know that? That's how they got the money? I mean, That's, that's how they got, got the money. Unbelievable. Manhattan. They got real estate in Manhattan. So if you're a subscriber to them, cancel that subscription and give it to us. Don't you know. say, listen, I can't confirm this, but it might be in Trump's building where they're doing oh it. My God. So cancel. cancel. <laughs> I can't confirm. I don't know. Yeah. You know, who so, knows? But it's like in really Manhattan. Sad. So you do the math. We will not take your money and go into Trump's building. I promise you that. So <laughs> We won't do that. So p- patreon.com slash lost in America. We haven't even got to what we're giving them yet. For five bucks a month, you get us three extra times a week. Kaplan and I doing a half hour comedy show about, think of it, now everyone's going back to work. And even if you're not going back to work, you're going back to the gym because gyms are reopening. You need something to listen to on the treadmill. Plug us in, run down the block. You'll run faster. We, it's a high energy, full throttle podcast. You will run extra fast in that treadmill. 
and here's the two pitches I'm giving you right now. We're at the 300 and something amount of dollars we make per month. Mm -hmm. Once we get to $400 a month, Kaplan and I are throwing for all of our Patreon subscribers, a party at a yearly party. The first year is going to be at the Friars Club. We'll see how much money we lose. And then we'll, we might have to move it to McDonald's for year yeah. two. We'll but the Trump's first year is going to be at the Friars Club because we told them. So even if you don't like, if you, especially if you don't like us, give us five bucks. So we have to throw this party for our listeners. Yo, bankrupt us. You can, if you hate us, we might go broke on this party and the podcast will be over. So that's a good way to. Yeah, it's the best off. deal for you. Yeah. And yeah. then also I'm adding this this week, Kaplan. And this Literally. goes forever now. 100% money back guarantee. Whoa. How about that on Patreon? If you, it's five bucks a month, up to 20 if you love us. Drew Freilich, shout out. Thank you Great very man, much. Drew, thank you. And a few other people, Brian Stewart up in Seattle. So it's five bucks a month. Uh, that's the lowest option, even up to 20. If you listen for one month and you cancel within the first month, I will mail you a $5 bill. I'll go mail. boomer on you. <laughs> I'll put cash in the mail and send it to you. To give you money, Patreon won't give you that money back. And guess what? They take a portion. They'll of it. take so a cut. We will lose money if you do that. We'll but. lose money, but I'll do it. Hundred percent money back guarantee. Because I know you're going to love our Patreon show. I know you're going to get hooked, and then you'll be in. It's. I was. Yeah, I was going to say happiness guaranteed, but I know we got a lot of miserable listeners, so we can't do that. But let's go. I like this money back guarantee because it's a great product, and. You will go, you're going to send a real $5 bill. You're not going to like cut it into pieces or use it to wipe yourself or anything, right? You're doing the real thing, I, real $5. Listen, Honest. if it was you, I know what you would do. I would okay. do that, yes. I would do pennies, 500 pennies. But you're I'm going to send him a $500 bill. How about that? Five, $5, okay. Great I mean, deal. a $5 bill, what did I say? <laughs> you just said 500 I think. I will not send you $500. <laughs> okay, let's get to, oh, like, here's the deal, Cap. What do you know about what's well, I'll start with what I know about what's going on with Putin. And then yeah. and I think there's a lot of issues we want to talk about today. We want to talk about uh, Navalny, Putin's. Um, well, first of all, go back and listen. We've had Oleg on episode 199, he, episode 211, episode 219. And now episode 230, we think this might be 229. <laughs> I haven't double checked. He's our anyway, man in Russia, as the CAA would say. He's the guy we go to every time. He's yeah. our man in Russia. On 199, we talked about Navalny. Uh, Navalny is Putin's um, rival in politics. He had, he had just poisoned him and come back. Yeah, yeah. Point. Putin poisoned him because he didn't like having rivals. No, so Navalny was in a coma for a few months. In 211, <laughs> we talked about how Russia hacked the United States, all of our tech companies with the solar winds and parts of our government with solar winds. On episode 219, we talked about Navalny came back. The, Ru the Putin's rival came back to Russia after being put in a coma and they put, uh, sent they put him in jail after that. Yeah, and when he came back, he got sent immediately to jail. So now Navalny is on a hunger strike. He's in prison in Russia. Putin seems to be losing um, uh, momentum. People, his, his numbers are down. His uh, popularity yeah. is down. Navalny's popularity seems to be skyrocketing while he's in prison. And Putin seems squeezed. And now he's lashing out. He's going after Ukraine. He's putting troops at the border of Ukraine. Maybe another, maybe another invasion. But what I see is this all starts with Putin's, from what I can tell, Putin's uh, popularity numbers are down. And he has a new he has an election coming up in later this year. Election. which We don't know if those are a sham <laughs> or not a sham. But either way, he's feeling squeezed. He's yeah. lashing out by imprisoning his enemies and attacking other countries. And, he, and and he's not just imprisoning Navalny. Now, I saw he arrested Navalny's lawyer. They passed. They made a ruling in the court, I believe, where they're just basically if you're a, if you're an opposition party, they could call you an extremist. And throw you in jail for years if you're involved at all in Navalny's operation, even if you're just peaceful. So it seems like things are getting worse. Yeah. Oh, and then the last thing that Putin did. Oh, I mean, I'm sure he did a million things. But one more thing is between our last two episodes, he formally signed the paper to, to, to make it so he can run for president again two more two more six year terms so he can go 12 more years making him like a dictator for life a uh, president for life should we say That's like 12 more years it's important we're during a pandemic we need a re we need a which again probably leadership. stems back to him needing to retain power okay oleg how are we doing welcome to the Let's, show yeah, everybody welcome. if you're in moscow go to the steal the show steal the show.net steal the show comedy club kaplan and i will be there relatively soon as soon as we can make it oleg welcome how do we do Hi, uh, nice to be back. Thanks for having me again. Thank you for coming back. Um, 
So yeah, I mean, what you what you said as like uh, I just imagined if Putin was listening to us, and you just you just going on, and he's done so many things recently. Yes, so many things. And what's the recent thing that Putin has done? It was like a, <laughs> we're, we're like a little fan club of Putin. He's like, oh, oh he would he like this. Stop. Oh, he would be impressed. Yeah, he <laughs> I think he this. would be impressed. I think he was like, <laughs> so we can we rebrand us as a Putin fan boy podcast? Oh, well, you wanted more... to become number one in Russia. So we'll get the bots that, that way, right? Do. This is the way to do it. Yeah, let's yeah. get the box. You'll definitely be you'll you definitely be number like number one in Crimea after this. <laughs> Wait, so you're saying just by because Putin sounds like us. He's a any press is good press kind of guy. Yeah. Any attention is good attention. So even yeah, if yeah, pretty much. Even if we're saying bad, even if we're saying we don't agree with what he does, just the fact that there's two Americans who even know what he does is probably a good thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For him, for him, it's good. Yeah. Oh my god. Um, so yeah, I mean, what you what you were talking about? Yeah, it's 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 pretty accurate. Uh, like you know, on the whole, it's um, uh, it has been it has been getting like we we have this uh, especially the last two three weeks. It seems like it's getting kind of like tighter and tighter. You know, around everybody who is involved in any sort of like opposition like activity or just sympathizing, because uh, it all it's all happening at the same time. It's all happening at the same time. They're going after uh, independent journalism, going after uh, even the lawyers, uh, uh, like sort of like lawyers groups, which uh, are try which are helping political prisoners and so on. And you know, like going after lawyers is usually not a good, like completely not a good way, not a good thing to do. Like it's usually not. It hasn't been done before uh, by Putin. Um, and uh, of course, the opposition itself, uh, you know, very soon, uh, it looks like it will be, uh, well, basically illegal and persecuted and, you know, prosecuted just if you uh, support or even donate money without actually doing anything to the opposition. But let's start, let's start with something, you know, like, let's just continue the, the, the stories that we were doing. Like uh, the last time, you know. I mean, this Navalny, is going to be how... at some point. This is going to be a, a mini series, a documentary, <laughs> yeah, a about serial. all the episodes we did with you along the way, because we are telling the story of Russia w w month by month. We're doing about once every two months. So yeah, let's continue from last time. Yeah. Uh, so as you see, like uh, what's the, like uh, I usually put a picture like behind me, like it's a picture of uh, the latest uh, protests, the latest protests. Uh, which uh, happened during because uh, Navalny was on hunger strike. Uh, he was on hunger strike because he started uh, feeling bad, like he he got sick in 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 prison, and he uh, like there is a lawful right uh, of every citizen as to get uh, a doctor like from outside, like a doctor if he pays for it, like you know not like a prison doctor, which is just says well yeah. he's some Eurofan. There you go. Like, you literally. don't want Putin's <laughs> prison doctor, I don't think. If you're in <laughs> Sounds like a bad idea. He yeah, already fool me once, shame on you. Fool that, me twice, shame on me. Je Jeffrey yeah, Epstein yeah. had Putin's prison doctor. That did not work well. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, I was like, oh, this is this is neurofan. Usually they're red and not like white and not glowing. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so yeah, so he did. Uh, yes, so he and he didn't. He was refused the this ride. Basically, even lawyers could visit him like very like rarely and very kind of like sporadically. So uh, he went on a hunger strike, and he was, I think, on a hunger strike for over three weeks something like this um and uh yeah and he was telling all the like you know sometimes he would kind of like send his notes and the lawyers would publish it like in his like social media groups is like the you know like the the old uh time-tested ways of how you know the administration deals with people on hunger strike for example uh it's like not allowed to for example to, to have a barbecue in prison obvious i mean quite obvious i mean, I, I don't think even an american prison considering how important is barbecue for your culture. Yeah, you can't have <laughs> a barbecue. You Only have a if barbecue. you're a mobsters. I've learned from the movie Goodfellas. Mobsters can cook in prison and stuff and have a feast, but they don't. even they can't barbecue. That's, that's No barbecues yeah, in yeah. Folsom prison. No. No. <laughs> So basically, thing. so basically, what he was uh, what he was telling is like a, a really like a time tested thing that he like lawyers uh, uh, told him beforehand that this might happen if he goes on hunger strike, and it really happened that when he was on hunger strike, uh, he just sensed the smell of like chicken being barbecued, and so he went to the like the yard or something, and there were like the other inmates were barbecuing because somebody got them chicken to barbecue specifically to torture him. To, yes. Oh! 
<laughs> Wait, so the other prisoners win out. They get good chicken. Um, so yeah, so basically, <laughs> I think I think the other prisoners are like fans of you now because of, you know, because of this. So if you're in prison, like, yeah, you want someone. You got to convince your cellmate to go on a hunger strike. <laughs> That's yeah, like, yeah, I think I think I think when he uh, when he stopped the hunger strike, they're like, oh no. Ah. <laughs> That's how like parent, to- by the way. I give my kids if one of my kids is being really bad about something, I, I reward the other kid who's being okay. I'm like, here, you get ice cream. So <laughs> Kaplan I'm, treats his kids like prisoners. I'm a <laughs> prison <laughs> parent. <laughs> have you tried that? <laughs> have wow. you tried doing this? <laughs> yes, I have, but I, I'm, I'm yeah. glad I know I have a philosophy. It's the Putin philosophy of parenting. So. <laughs> Yeah. He loves the show even more now. Our, <laughs> our, our, our ratings are skyrocketing in yeah. Russia as we speak. When one of my kids is refused to eat dinner, I give the kid a feast. I give him a <laughs> pizza and everything. Yeah, so nice. Basically, when he was on hunger strike for, uh, like for about like two and a half weeks or something, uh, they organized this rally. Like, and 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 also one of the one of the other incentives behind kind of doing this particular rally that happened uh, like I think a week ago or something. Uh, one of the other things uh, was that uh, FBK, which is like the um, organization that Navalny founded, and it's the organization which produced basically all the films that he did, uh, and all, and uh, also it later became sort of like a network of like opposition. Like they're not registered as a party, but they coordinate like the opposition forces in Russian regions as well. So. Uh, it's all kind of one organization, even, even though, you know, legally it's not. So basically, um, they uh, put forward the law, with, uh, like, well, kind of like an action against FBK uh, that they become an uh, extremist organization, you know, from now on. An extremist organization is like, well, basically the whole thing, there is a, uh, during Putin, Putin's rule, there was created a special uh, force uh, to deal with extremism uh, and like there is a special like um, law uh, which was also developed uh, but it was used uh, chiefly of course to not deal with real extremists like terrorists or so on but it's just with like the opposition movements which ah. uh, they don't like basically well, it wasn't for al-qaeda it well, was for, no 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 of like course the not. other yeah. political parties they could just call them terrorist organizations and then yeah yeah well, for everyone. example like hamas uh, hamas is the organization which has official meetings with Russian uh, like government, they don't consider officials. Hamas a, a terrorist organization. No, no, but they consider no. they can, Navalny's party. Well, like, I mean, ISIS, yes. But I said, like, I read Hamas that Hezbollah. ISIS was on this list, and I read that the Jehovah's Witnesses were on this list. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, what yeah. is what's the deal with that? I mean, yeah, I, but I'll I tell you agree. this: <laughs> if you've ever lived in the suburbs, the Jehovah's Witnesses knocking on your door is an act of terrorism. I, I, I have lived <laughs> in the suburbs, so I kind of so, yeah, like, again, so Putin, you're doing a great job. What do they have in common? Like the ISIS and Jehovah's Witnesses? Yeah, one like knocks on your door and keeps you in constant terror and the other is ISIS. Anyway, so yeah, like uh, Hamas, for example, isn't the Hezbollah isn't the ISIS is and now uh, the FBK is well, basically it's already uh, put forward and one of the one of the um, other um, important things about this whole process uh, is that they found a, a new way of um well making the making this uh, proposals reality is they tr- they make the um the court they make the court hearing secret because uh they say oh some kind of like state uh like secret information is involved and therefore uh, it's uh, like the the court process the court hearing becomes a secret and only the lawyers have the um, right to see the materials uh, and they can't disclose it, of course, this information. And that's like the the the, the mark of all the recent sort of processes that, that they're um, uh, now, uh, you know, like uh, the, the process with which they persecute the opposition recently. They just say, oh, it's like the secret, secret stuff. A secret and then trial. lawyers, yeah, yeah, it's like a secret trial. Like there's no, no documents ever get disclosed and like, for example, so the lawyers can't can't uh, disclose what they've seen, but they can tell their opinion. For example, and Navalny's lawyers, for example, they're saying, well, of course, like we've seen the documents and there's nothing like nothing that we already didn't know. So there's no really secret information. But as you understand, nobody can actually prove it because nobody is allowed 
to see or <laughs> to disclose it. Yeah. So and if Ali's one lawyer was arrested, so the people doing so, this have to. Well, here's my question: lightly. Is that Navalny? If Navalny was kind of an independent actor, or in America, if he was just some third party candidate, you can arrest that person, and then not this would happen. But not you can in America, arrest, you can't. Well, no, I mean, no, no. I mean, say he's that person's in Russia, right? You right. can arrest that mm -hmm. person. Theoretically, you can arrest somebody, and then they're gone. But the issue with Navalny is he also has. I mean, he he's like an entire infrastructure. He has uh, yeah. offices in what 37, 37 different places, offices. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah Forty eight yeah. around the country. He has what is it? I don't know. Tons of people working for him in the thousands. So you would not only have to arrest him, which they did. You would have to. Wouldn't you have to then go arrest all the? Well, now they're trying to destroy the infrastructure as well, and it, it's working because if and you know nobody really doubts it that they will uh, be uh, considered extremists. Uh, and that means a lot of things. For example, I because I do like a monthly donation to, uh, well, of course, to the uh, FBK. I did until Navalny's this month. Navalny's party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, uh, and I canceled this week, uh, like monthly thing. I just put like a sum, like a year ahead, like I paid them like a year and a head ahead or something. Because if I'm donating them and they're extremists, that means I'm also, you know, I'm also doing unlawful yeah, things. Yeah, you're funding. Uh, it's yeah. like if Kaplan yeah. just started donating to ISIS. I mean, I've been, I had a monthly donation to the Jehovah's Witnesses. I don't know how. <laughs> yeah. it, was like, it was like the Trump thing where I did it by accident. I somehow clicked so monthly. That's the problem with you coming to Russia, my friend. <laughs> yeah, I can never come. <laughs> my nanny was a Jehovah's Witness. <laughs> so, so uh, and then. So then they have to. I think, sorry, Kaplan, go ahead with the. No, letter. I was going to say because they're basically for the first time since the Soviet era making like being the opposition a criminal offense, right? That's what they're saying. So uh, if you're, well, if yeah, you're supporting I mean, the they opposition. Don't, like, there's no official kind of like there's no like uh, uh, sweeping sort of generalization there. Like you can't be in opposition, but the, you know the, they just go after each individual organization uh, right. and they, uh, they always can say oh this is an extremist organization this is not allowed and they do the same with press as well because one of the uh, probably the most influential uh, uh like media outlet of the last you know, five years is something medusa called medusa.io uh they um uh were, were uh declared uh something like also a new like form of entity that they uh, recently um, kind of made a made a thing. Uh, it, it's now considered foreign agent. Foreign agent is something like uh, it's it's basically it's not decided in court. It's just decided by one sort of like uh, like government office, and nobody really knows what, like what they based on judgment their judgment on. Uh, and for an agent, basically, it means that they get like some kind of financing from abroad, uh, but nobody really knows what it is. Just like, and also they're not, uh, they're not, um, they're not uh, like banned from broadcasting, you know, or publishing in Russia. But uh, that means that if they're for an agent, that means that on every uh, like bit of news that they publish, every material that they publish, they must have. Uh, like a, a sign, basically, like a couple of sentences, which says like this message is being like given to you by like a foreign agent, blah blah oh, blah, yeah. blah blah. And it has to be like a big, like has to, the letters have to be two times as big as the text of the actual news. So a lot of organizations, or like for example, like human rights organizations, are already working up under this uh, conditions. Uh, but of course, if it's a popular media it's much worse because they actually uh even though their uh, office is based in i think latvia uh but like all the money they get is from russia their uh the, the businesses that they that publish adverts are russian businesses and they work for russian clients so of course uh this like if you're just a human rights organization and you know like people who donate donate to you will donate to you regardless yeah. But if your business is literally like winning the, you know, winning the competition in the digital world and like half of your half of your, you know, output is just like this message is brought to you by <laughs> just, fucking yeah, you know, like this is, a, you know, not a realistic business model anymore. So now they're kind of also switching to the direct 
uh, like support, uh, kind of like a donation thing to compensate for the lack of, you know, like sponsor like advertisers. So the, pol- so the political opposition are being um, harassed or possibly arrested. And now the media is being taken, the opposition media is being taken down. Here's my question. Yeah. And I know one thing I've we've learned, Kaplan and I have learned through doing these episodes with you, is that uh, Putin is not, he still has this, he still seems to like to have some idea or that he's uh, legitimately elected and is legitimately the leader and all that stuff, which is why, because the big question is always, why doesn't he just kill Navalny? You know, we tried. Obvi- <laughs> obviously, yeah, but now he has him in prison. I yeah. mean, like, I understand. So the question is two questions. Why wouldn't he just kill him now just to get rid of him and move on? And number two, I know that you said these protests have been happening and they're I've read they're bigger and bigger. Is it worse for Naval for, for Putin? If you're Putin, is it better to have Navalny in prison or just let him out and hope it goes away or something? Mm. Well, well, that's the whole thing. Uh, you know, uh, he's uh, he, I, it looks like he just hopes it goes away if he does, you know, if he performs certain actions, you know, close down, like, you know, imprison this guy or, you know, close this media. Uh, but the, the, the problem is that the protests and, you know, the uh, whole unease is based on objective economic and social factors. You know, the economics is getting much, much worse. Uh, you know, the COVID response uh, even though they try to, uh, uh, like now we're, we're facing this big problem actually in Russia because like, yeah, we have this vaccine, which seemingly is okay. It's a normal vaccine, oh, this, but people yeah. don't vo- don't want to vaccinate because of the, because the messages they've been getting from, you know, from the government, from Putin himself uh, are kind of like very uh, disparate because like at one point he was like, oh yeah, it's very important to like COVID is a serious thing. But then, you know, next week he's like, oh, but actually, oh, they need to vote for me to become a lifelong person. Fucking, that's not, that's inconvenient that they can't really go out. Oh, okay, COVID is gone. Fine. Go and oh, vote. Fine. really? See, so, I would think that because the, the, the Sputnik vaccine, the Russian vaccine, they said is like 90% effective, right? Which is really yeah, no, good. It's, it seems would, like it's really normal vaccine. And then, you know, I would the think he would be did proud. A great job. You know, but I, then, yeah, I mean, we are. But the, the point is that, uh, the messages, you know, the signals that the government uh, yeah. sends out, they're kind of like, we already, we won the COVID. We did it like better than anyone in the world, even though ah. uh, statistically it's worse, you know, because if we, uh, you know, the recent, um, the recent um, like study shows, because uh, after like at the end of the year, uh, when like this statistic, like Russian statistics agency, uh, they published the information like births and deaths and everything, right? Yeah. And this is the only... Uh, you know, because like you can you can uh, fiddle with the um, COVID date itself. It says, "Oh, do we count the people who died of COVID, but not because of co- like yes. because of COVID, but after having COVID or during having COVID or other causes?" Because this is all uh, like uh, th- this uh, has been happening. You know, a lot of kind of like lowering the numbers. But when you look, but there is one agent like state agency which doesn't lie is this one this like the ross stat like the statistical agency who just says like this many people died okay this year it's like a and if we count and if we count uh you know like in relation to the population how many like excess deaths excess death rate in like for the, the period of the pandemic in russia it is worse uh than everywhere where it's been counted it's worse I in read america that. It's worse than in Britain. Uh, well, there are other countries like Mexico, India, that we didn't really publish, uh, you know, this full um, statistics. But of the countries which has published, like this is the worst. And th- that's the problem. But but they're saying, OK, we're not going to have a third wave. We're not going to have anything. It's all fine. And so people are like, well, if we want, why vaccinate? We don't really believe in this. Yeah. You know, so. That's what happened with India. And that's why they're where they are. So yeah, as you're yeah. saying, I did read that, that they said out of every a thousand thousand, I mean, sorry, every 100,000 people, I think 313 deaths. Right. Yeah, in From Russia, COVID which just, which would make it higher than the U.S. by a lot. Yeah, yes, yeah. so like by per capita, yeah, it would per be capita. Higher, yeah. But the numbers have not, been, as you said, not been reported. Uh, 
accurately. They've just kind of written written into different sort of like cause of death is not COVID and so on and so on. Yeah. But if you like, this is like this is something that you can't really argue like the overall statistics because you know how many people die is important for the tax office. So you can't. Yes. You, can't, you, you can't need to know. That. You got to collect the money. <laughs> so what poisoned. is it? Yeah. So Putin's just hoping that N- the Navalny situation goes away, but he's going to keep him in prison. What's Navalny's side hoping? Are they hoping he gets let out? Are they hoping that? I mean, does any does he think that foreign no, nobody, governments? Nobody will believes. Come in? No, no, nobody believes that he will be uh, uh, he will be let out of prison on like parole or whatever. Like it's not uh, like they everybody's pretty sure that he will stay until the end of his term, um, which will be like two two uh, years and something from now. Oh, okay. Um, two more years. Yeah. So uh, and now I don't think they have a plan now because it's it just came very quick. You know the whole situation with the extremist thing. So now I think uh, two or three more people who are like running the organization moved abroad just to be able to kind of uh, mm. well, keep Stay the organization safe. going. You know, yeah. just kind of like to to run the digital side of it and um, YouTube channel and everything because they, of course they would get arrested as well. And, um, and, and uh, for now they up? stopped. And now they stopped. Um, well, basically. Uh, they got rid of the symbolics and you know the logo and stuff uh, because uh, it, legally these organizations like regional centers are decentralized, so it's not one organization. Um, so as long as there is no kind of symbolics like logos, which will soon become extremists, like sort of like a swastika, um, like they will keep can keep going up to a, you know certain point and not just kind of put the lives of activists directly in danger, you know. Yes. So yeah, so for now and for now I think that's the only plan is kind of just to minimize the you know, losses and kind of see how how it's possible to regroup and so on and so on. What about renaming mm. themselves Hamas and then they can still donate money and no. <laughs> Sorry? What about they rename themselves Hamas and then they can get money? Yeah, like, <laughs> or <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe they can get money through your Patreon. Yeah. <laughs> Patreon. Speaking okay. of guys, yes. we got to take an ad break right here. We have before we get to our ads, we got a couple great shows. We are the world's smartest. We are part of the world's smartest podcast network. That includes three shows total. Us right here, Lost in America. Also, Andrew Heaton, professional comedian Andrew Heaton. Um, Formerly of the Reason Network, people might know him from there, has a great show called uh, The The Political Political Orphanage. Orphanage. This week he has on Steve Krakauer. Uh, They talk about the uh, press and politicians. How Sorry, I just got this two seconds ago. (laughs) I talked fourth watch editor Steve Krakauer about how the press and politicians should be skeptical of each other instead of buddies with each other. Okay. And Andrea Jones uh, Roy, Dr. Andrea Jones Roy, has a future show coming soon. Gigantic guest. Secret project. We can't discuss that name, but it's can't say who the guests are, but go to worldsmartestpodcastnetwork.com for all the latest. Find out about them. And now, Kaplan, a word from your local sponsor. Okay, we're back. (laughs) Thank you, sponsors. You You guys are the best. You support us. Keep well, us alive and tell, well, because we're not getting, you know, I mean, God bless our 50 Patreon subscribers, but besides them, everyone else needs to pull their weight. Kaplan, well, maybe ahead. people in Russia who are scared to donate to Navalny's cause now because they don't want to be extremists. Send that money to us. We're clearly Putin's fanboys here, so it's going to be okay. You won't get in trouble. So <laughs> Patreon. And then maybe we'll, we could be the intermediary. Yes. <laughs> or is that a bad idea? Are they going to run foreign agents on, on our scroll? Or do we? Well, them? you are foreign agents. We by are. definition. <laughs> Yes. No. <laughs> so it's not an insult. It's an accurate description. Well, to be an agent, yeah. I think someone would have needed to hire us. So right. we are right. unemployed. For, We're for trying Mono. to become foreign agents. That's yeah. our maybe, I, maybe, maybe I'm one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah who knows? Um, so so yeah. what about what about Ukraine? So this also seems in my head to be tied to uh, Putin losing popularity. From what I read in Crimea in 2013 or four, I think it was it 14. 2014. Well, 13, 14. Yeah, 14 okay. is the time when the actual... 2013, 14. Crimea. Putin decided to send in Russian troops and take Crimea, which I had to look up on a map. It's basically an island or maybe a peninsula in peninsula. the Black Sea, correct? It's a peninsula with a very, like, uh, very narrow pass 
So as long who controls the past controls the whole thing, mate. Ah, so okay. Chief. So he went over there and took Crimea away from Ukraine and said, this is ours now. And from what I read, it was a time when the economy was not very good at that time. Uh, Putin's popularity was not very good and he needed a yeah. win. So he said, to show my supporters that I'm still powerful, I'll just go take this and yeah. pump up my ratings. So um, as, as our <laughs> former president would call I mean, poll numbers. Um, so is that is that now because now Putin's put troops at the border of the Ukraine, uh, Ukraine again. Is that the idea again, maybe that he needs to take a little more Ukraine? Uh, just, uh, well, maybe maybe Ukraine is his like secret resource. He just yeah. like, oh, <laughs> yeah. going back to the well. to, I need more popularity. So uh, if uh, I need to get more popularity, so soon there's going to be less Ukraine. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I'm <laughs> wondering. <laughs> Until there's no Ukraine left and then we're going to have to. <laughs> we have yeah. Problem. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. Like, I think it's it's in this at this moment in 2014, it was completely decided like this. Basically, the predicament for Russia was very clear because then he chose to not be seen as a legitimate leader. He, he chose like, the, so he had this two ways. One of these ways is like he will be seen for, as the dictator for the rest of his life by the West, by, you know, all the other countries, by, uh, you know, like a certain... Uh, uh, he, he will terrify all of Russia's neighbors as well, like yes. former Soviet countries. Um, uh, so this is one path. Uh, and he will obviously have to stay in power forever so that his um, like war crimes will be never sort of, you know, like he won't be on right. trial. Prosecuted. Uh, and uh, the second path was, you know, something else, but... Uh, it would be possible for him to kind of even even though by on, at this point he already kind of uh, had this uh, thing with Medvedev. Medvedev was for four years and he came back and everybody was like, "Oh come on!" Like I mean, yeah, like legally this can be possible. But we know what's happening. Yeah, to take but, to know, become president again. Yeah, not. to become president. It was a fork again. in the road so, moment. You're saying he had a chance. Yeah, to yeah, yeah. Be yeah. Legitimate. So he like if, if he didn't take Crimea, like there was. Um, uh, like a chance of him kind of s still being seen as legitimate leader and maybe like transferring power to somebody else. Yes. But since he did that, he chose this. He chose like militarist rhetoric. He chose sort of like uh, 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 the 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 like becoming like sort of like a father of Russia, like a character who's like a, you know like a strong strong man dictator. Like Fidel whatever. Castro or but, Mao Zedong yeah, or something yeah, like that. Yeah. So, guys. yeah, so basically then this happened. I don't know about now. I don't think that this would work, uh, considering that uh, at this point it wasn't yet clear how bad the economics was uh, in 2014 because there were no sanctions, no nothing. Uh, like they kind of, they predicted some sanctions and they followed. And basically the economy hasn't been growing in like 11 years. Yes. Uh, so at this point, it was like five years. Now everybody knows that, you know, like another war, like people, I, I'm not sure that uh, it, since, especially since people don't see any uh, reason for this war, because like somebody shot somebody at the border is not a reason for the war, you know. Like, uh, it's just like something that happens. Is that a the story? I, I missed that yeah. story. No, no, no. I mean, like, nobody oh. actually was like some, some, there, there were some like messages from both sides that somebody's, uh, uh, oh, they were shooting, you know, they were shooting, but this one happens everywhere, yes. you know, between US, between USA and Canada, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we shoot, we have a lot to shoot out to the border with the Canadians. Whenever, whenever yeah. Biden and needs a win politically, he goes and shoots a couple people in Toronto. It's because, such an yeah. easy win, too. The Canadians don't have guns at the border. There's a joke. The Canadians will say, oh, the, the people from that side were shooting. And you're like, oh, yeah, no, the Canadians were shooting. Canadians, no, we're not. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we can't. don't have guns. We <laughs> have literally can't do it. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I, I like it. Doesn't look like look now that it's uh, a realistic scenario. I I've, like when they when there were like kind of these troops uh, gathering on the board next to the border. I uh, like I was one of these people who said no, like nothing will happen. It's just the it's just a show of strength, maybe a show of strength to see what Biden does because it was the time where he was also addressing these issues with Russia. Uh, it was a show of strength to Europe, to to America. Uh, kind of to see how they react, um, something like this. Um, uh, I, I didn't think that would be like Putin. I think Putin is not yet, yet for now, he's not that insane. 
like you know to start another world like i don't think many of many people who support him would see it as reasonable even so he was kind of uh, testing the limits of his own power to see if yeah, i do this like what this. will europe That's, do and if they'll America do nothing do. then i might yeah. as well do it what about this the one thing i read that his reasoning for what or, or like the the theory as to how he might reason taking part of ukraine again was that there's uh, there's a portion of Ukraine where he had the he had the troops called is it Babu ba something with a B man I have to look it up but um anyway he was gonna take uh, oh Donbass sorry Donbass yeah, yeah, yeah. Don, Don, Donbass is yeah is this part which is now kind of like uh like it, it's kind of independent but it's like it's not kind of like it's, it's uh, basically controlled by Russia. And but this it's, was but it's part yeah. of Ukraine. Technically. Yeah, and his move was very interesting to me. They said in 2019, he went, he gave 200,000 people in Donbass who are Russia sympathizers. They they live in yeah. Ukraine, but they're the, loyal the, to Russia. The Russian he descent. gave them Russian citizenship. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that if the, even though they're in Ukraine, so that if Ukrainian government did anything to them, he could say that was an attack on Russia and then he could um, invade. Is that? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Like there, I think there were many reasons why he why he did, did give them Russian passports because just because they didn't have any pass, like they, they couldn't go to Ukrainian because the Ukrainian authority de facto doesn't exist there, so they couldn't like oh. prolong their Ukrainian passport. It's basically yeah, it's like a, a separatist territories which are still kind of recognized as part of Ukraine by the whole world, but Russia recognizes them as two separate entities. Uh, but de- like de facto, the Russian troops, it's all controlled by Russia. Russia, do, like d- uh, there are dotations from Russia. Uh, they all come to Russia for work and so on. And they issue their own passports, their own documents, but they're kind of useless, you know. To any, oh, like, to see, them. they didn't tell yeah. us that part of the story in the Western media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, have, they have passports of these countries, which and they, these passports don't are not worth anything anyway, you know, to anybody. So that, that kind of just makes sense that they basically like it's the same economic space as Russia now. So yeah. we get the Russian passports, of course. Um, yeah, uh, that's actually an interesting story because I knew I know uh, personally um, a journalist from one of the bigger, biggest, like, um, uh, well, like channels, media networks, who went to investigate there, uh, this military camp and caused quite a stir uh, in like uh, Russia and I think in uh, abroad as well, uh, because they kind of drove right to the, into the middle of the the the, the camp because nobody stopped them because everybody was like cause for some reason they nobody like, like they weren't allowed to do it but nobody stopped them and so they're just kind of you know, drive into the camp and film everything and they're like you know uh, like you know like children's uh, like a sports playground and all the soldiers are kind of doing push-ups there and just, what's up? <laughs> Literally, <laughs> just they just see, you know, all the stuff. Like, they didn't see anything secret, of course, but, like, yeah. technically they weren't allowed to be there, but nobody really stopped them, so they're just, okay, we'll film that. And that's in the Donbass region of Ukraine? No, no, no. This is in the uh, Voronezh, like this military camp that they set up On in the Voronezh uh, ah, uh, the region next to the border. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm. And what about, so that's interesting. So you think that all of these, that fork in the road theory, I'd never heard before that you, that all of the, all of Putin's actions now are informed by what he, his decision he made in 2014, that this is like a never look back situation decision. This is, if I'm taking Crimea, the West is going to hate me forever. I can now never leave office. And right. so that's why Navalny is the ultimate uh, threat. Because if Navalny's team gets power, Putin loses power. And now, if he's not leader anymore, he's going to the Hague. He has war crimes on his back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got I think it's of- I think for him it's even worse than that. Because like this is this looks like an unlikely situation anyway, that Navalny's uh, Navalny gets power. But even uh, I think we're at this point, and Putin thinks he's at this point, even if he brings back Medvedev or something, like even if he bring if he brings back somebody Some, who can, uh, he considers loyal. Yeah. That still might, uh, that still might, uh, you know, be a bad decision for him for a very simple reason. For now, uh, like the economics is going worse and worse and worse, uh, going to shit basically. Uh, and the simplest way 
to boost the economics and to actually make it to grow is uh, to make peace with the whole world and to kind of announce, even if cosmetic liberalization, and somebody like Medvedev would, for example, do this. Uh, and then the, the sanctions would be lifted. And this president, this president, whoever he would be, if he just get got the economy to grow after 11 years of it going down, he would be immensely more popular than Putin. Right. And then, Instantly. And then he could then he could give Putin over or he could. Turn uh, yeah. Over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So he Putin thinks now he's uh, he can't, he trust, can't really trust. He can't really entrust this post to anyone. And are the the sanctions, do you you think the sanctions are the biggest reason for the economy or is it the oil prices or is it both? No, it's all, it's all, it's all together, but sanctions, they affect a lot of things. The sanctions, they kind of stifle the technological kind of the apply, the the applying of like technology, Western technology, because Russia is still like in, for all of the spheres, a vast majority of technology is imported. So sanctions, no, sanctions play a big part, but also uh, the, the the biggest part is of course the lack of development in the like the first period of Putin's power, like 2000 to 2010, like more or less, because that they didn't create like they just kind of they were buying a lot of stuff, just exchanging oil right. and gas but to like technology industries. and like all this stuff, and uh, the economy didn't really grow um, uh, naturally. It wasn't like they weren't created like institutions for, you know, keeping the private property safe and so on and so on. And don't people keep um, leaving the country? Like I read that like 70,000 yeah. people who are considered like scientists or leading, you know, educated people left the country last year. And that, that's like a Russian like brain drain, they call it, I think, where it's just like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's happening every year. And harder, I think harder, it's harder. increased, yeah. increased over the last several years. Yeah. And Putin just um, can't turn it around because he can't change yeah, now yeah. at this point as you said. Yeah, but I think I think Putin doesn't see um, now I mean he, he, I'm sure he thinks about it but I'm sure that he doesn't see like this is a realistic option to transfer power even to somebody who is his ally at the moment. Wow. So you think he's in for life as long as until they literally pull him out. He's in his bunker. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And what about do you think that uh the Belarus situation is obviously still pretty volatile for him, pretty up in the air. We talked to Misha Kalin a lot on this podcast. Mm-hmm. He's a comedian mm-hmm. in, in uh, Minsk, Minsk. Yeah, I, know. I met him in Moscow, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, you did? Oh, cool. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so Misha was tell- hopeful, at least. He said he was hopeful that this could be almost a situation where um, uh, Lukashenko goes down in Belarus, Putin goes down in Russia, sometime soon and they both kind of fall together do you see any situation where that from your perspective um i see it as um, unlikely for one uh, for this reason in belarus like belarus showed uh, you know a very depressing thing at least to me that even if because the difference now is that in belarus uh, basically the majority of people understood that you know the elections were fake and so they they understood that as their right complete completely their right to go out and protest because they everybody f- felt like more than half of the people in quite a small country and kind of yeah they felt that they've been robbed of something and they were uh, uh, angry about this of course and they went on the street but because uh, the protest was peaceful which is likely to happen in all the post-soviet countries uh like peaceful they don't have um, uh they don't have uh firearms they don't have anything and they are kind of uh uneasy about you know making a protest violent hmm. um and also because the police the army they have no they, they have no s- separate kind of um, they're completely under control of the centralized power uh, in in Russia and Belarus. So nothing like what happens in Latin America, for example, can happen here, when they're kind of uh, or, or Egypt or something where like the army is like a separate entity. Yes, and they and- have their own code of ethics. And you know, for better or for worse, you know, they're a subject, but they're an actor in Russia and Belarus. They're not an actor. So basically, a million like in, in Belarus, it showed like hundreds of thousands of people go on the street. Uh, like march towards the presidential palace and then they just put a line of like heavily armed people here and they're just saying like you're not you know you you shall not pass like, you know yeah and people are like well you know they have our they have firearms we don't what are we gonna do 
you know, like nobody will just run, you know, no uh, to, be, to be shot. Yeah. Uh, and that's, and that's Belarus. And that's in Belarus, it's much, uh, like, so uh, much more people um, don't support Lukashenko. Much more, it's much more compact. There are no distances like in Russia. Um, so even in oh, this you mean like even ge geographical distance? Yeah, yeah, yeah geographical. How big distance. the country is? Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. in in general, like that that looked like an ideal situation to overthrow him, but it still didn't work. And yeah, in cool. Russia, it's still you know I think still about fifty percent will still vote for Putin regardless of like even if they get a fair election. So he could it, win a fair election. It would just be close, is what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. or, he would win yeah, yeah, like a legitimate course. election. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He, and if it ever even got to the get, point, yeah, even if they get like Navalny on like TV and so on, he will tell. He will kind of all these investigations about how many like Putin's friends, how much they uh, stole, uh, how much they stole from the budget, and so on and so on. Uh, they will still be a lot of people who will still vote for Putin because they will say, "Oh, like, everybody steals; it's fine." You know, like, <laughs> yes, uh, yeah. There's like, those people always exist. So it's much, much closer here in Russia, and it will take like it, even if Lukashenko falls, which I hope he does, uh, it will happen much sooner, and it won't affect Russia this much. Um, I think in Russia for the next ten years, I guarantee nothing will happen. Well, it almost feels like for Lukashenko to fall in Belarus, Putin has to fall. If there's no Putin, there's no Lukashenko because Putin is the one supporting him, right? Well, yeah, probably, but there, but this will never happen. Like Putin will I never see. fall. He could cut, but Putin could cut his losses with Belarus and say, "I'm not going to support you anymore if it doesn't look good." Whereas yeah, he's not going to yeah. come, you know, himself, he's going to dig in. So. Or, or he could just that could be his next win. He could just take over Belarus and say, Lukashenko, you're now the governor of Belarus, but it's it's part of Russia. I, I don't yeah. think I don't think Putin <laughs> needs another like five million people who, who know how to protest. <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good <laughs> point. You got to take over a country of docile people. Who don't yeah, like yeah, yeah. Take over this podcast first. Yes. Right? <laughs> We're apathetic. We'll support you. <laughs> um, and then so I read about the economy wise, obviously, I know you guys were just talking about it, but it's, it's tough to, um, I was the 2014 move also a fork in the road for the economy. Because what I read is that Russia has uh, deliberately on purpose designed the economy to where they're no longer, there's not a lot of foreign trade. They're not as heavily invested in foreign money, for American dollars, foreign trade, because of the fact that if they are invested in that, it can always get sanctioned and then they lose. Yeah. So it's more in, in t uh, focused on like in-country investments, but which on one hand is good. It protects the country from foreign sanctions. But on the bad side, there's only so much you can do. There's a yeah, of course. How, yeah. Much, how far you? Because like the the foreign investments are limited, and now we live in a globalized economy, and you know no one can escape that. You know, because China, for whatever like, how, no matter how like politically like uh, like how insulated it can be politically, how kind of uh, uh, different the political system, no matter how different it is from the Western police political system, it's still a globalized economy. It enjoys a lot of foreign investment. Uh, which Russia uh, doesn't yeah, does to an extent, but not nearly the same. Yeah, no matter what China does, I mean, even Biden will still say Trump would say it. They go, "Well, we're you know we're still going to do business with them, but just well, don't do that important. again." Yeah, would be like the that's kind of the <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just and every time they can, oh, they stole our technology as well. Well, <laughs> it's it's fine. It's okay. Don't it's, do it next time. I told them not to do it time. next time. Yeah, yeah, it's a good point because China, we can't really live without China. His economy, yeah, you know, it's, totally. Whereas Russia is not interlaced at all, at the same to the same effect. I mean, yeah, 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 not nearly, nearly the same. Yeah. What about mm. this idea? So when the sanctions just happened, um, the U.S. the U.S. sanctioned Russia. Russia sanctioned U.S. back about a month ago, and these were based off the um, the solar, solar winds, winds yeah. right? The solar winds yes, hack yes, yes. that mm -hmm. we talked about on this podcast. Yeah. We broke the story. Um, heard it here first. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, Russian agents uh, broke whatever hacked into U.S. U.S. businesses. The United States, with Biden in charge, in March, put sanctions onto Russia, but they were pretty small. It was like ten diplomats, a couple other yeah, people. Yeah, 
Yeah. Um, I mean, and then a little bit of like, oh, American businesses can't buy into Russian bonds, which there wasn't much of that happening anyway. Your parents didn't buy you Russian bonds when you were a kid or no? That was not part. No. That <laughs> Grandkids. Was, been in Natalie just Sparks to, owned Russian just bonds. To play, just to play with. If, if they bought it, it would yeah. be just to play with. Just because I case, don't think to play with the bonds, they're really toy. useful for anything else. <laughs> we're going to send then, our people bond, Russian bonds. As a money back guarantee on the Patreon. yeah, as a money back guarantee, <laughs> and then Russia. So then Putin the next day did the exact same thing. He kicked out ten American diplomats, and I don't know if he sanctioned American bonds or what. But it was kind of like a little bit. But what interesting that came out of this is both Biden and Putin said that they would be interested in a summit, a face to face meeting, Ooh. sometime soon to decide how they can work together going forward. Has that been in the news at all in Russia, or is that any idea there? Yeah, yeah, but in Russia, in Russia, it's uh, yeah, it's uh, it's on Russian news. Russian news are actually very funny if you look at them, like you know, kind of just if you're not in this situation, but you look at it like from a third person perspective, you sort of it's it's really funny how they kind of they try to um, kind of the the the, the whole great like machine of like propaganda and like new all the news outlets state media outlets they all kind of have just one purpose is to just make putin look cool <laughs> like <laughs> yes, literally that's like, what i would do if sometimes, I no no but for example like recently uh he basically he made um, um the 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 may holidays because we have this may holidays which is like first of may is like an old uh, like a spring and labor day which was very popular in soviet union yeah. other countries as well it is the first of may and uh the ninth of may is the victory over germans in the second world war uh so it and it was always kind of like two little bits of holiday, like three days and three days or something. And he just came out and said, "Well, uh, I make it uh, the national holidays, like non-working days, like ten or eleven days." Oh, and but, nice! And 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 everybody's like, great. So who's going to pay for this? And he's like, "Yeah, the employers will." So, oh. <laughs> Wait, they're paid holidays. They're forced wow. to be off yeah, in yeah, May. Yeah, yeah. The whole so, so, so basically, uh, there is this joke going around. I think you already did this a few times before. So the joke, the the, the joke is like uh, uh, Putin walks into a bar and says, "Everybody gets a beer," and the bartender's paying. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, but he's, he's not willing to. <laughs> he's not willing to pay for it. He's just he's, says yeah, yeah, yeah. And but, but moreover, moreover, the, the thing is that he's not. Even, it's not even in his competence. Like something like this can be done by the guy, like the the minister, the cabinet of minister, the the prime minister should do it. But of course, you know, uh, in 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 their kind of twisted mind is like that Putin will seem more cool if he's kind of just like bestowing this upon people he's like you can do what you like go have a barbecue you know yeah, uh, yeah. yes i poisoned uh the guy you like yes he's on a hunger strike in prison <laughs> about but, but yeah. i'm giving hear me out you get nine yeah. days vacation coming up soon <laughs> do the kids still have to go to school or those school days uh no they are also like no not they don't go to school no oh so i'd be out for that i want my kids in school and i went off work that's the- <laughs> 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 so you wouldn't enjoy that i would not yeah. enjoy no that's not a holiday <laughs> did putin Terrible. say yeah guess what yeah. navalny wouldn't that. give you this if he was in charge i could tell you that much he wants you yeah, to work yeah, 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 yeah. he doesn't believe in weekends <laughs> so, so just so so yeah just coming back to the biden thing so as, as i said like it's all kind of about like making putin look cool and so it looked like on Russian news, it was just like, oh, Biden accused Putin of something, like Putin, that he said that he's like a murderer. Yes. Uh, and so, and, and Putin made this kind of like uh, uh, statement. He said like, oh, yeah, I, like, let's, I, I will have a debate with him or something like this. Like I would, I would kind of, let's, let, let's just meet or whatever. I, I don't think they can meet because now they can't, like, it's hard for them to meet in person, but I don't think either of them know how to use technology. So yeah, I think can't have a Zoom. <laughs> the Zoom would be tough for a couple a of Zoom with sleepy Joe Biden and Vlad Putin. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah, nobody so. would, would, nobody, nobody would donate to Patreon if they did the podcast. <laughs> that would be a great pod. They, yeah. they would not go to number one in Armenia. Yeah, I'll tell you that much. I like this show. But Trump and Putin could do it, could have done a pod. That would have been. No. Yeah, would have they been could awesome. be number one in Belarus. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if Trump and Putin did that. <laughs> All right. So we think it's just a couple more years in prison for Navalny is basically the plan, mm, right? Yeah. Yeah, more or less. And he's eating again now, or is he? 
He gave up. Yeah, yeah, right? because uh, they they allowed the doctors in uh, to the like to to in uh, to treat him, so he oh, stopped the, so... the hunger strike. Yeah. Ah. Oh, I had this question too, and maybe this is my last one. How is he? I know that he's getting messages out to his followers, and you said it yeah. through his lawyers. Yeah, through um, the lawyers. Which goes back to another assumption in the United States: is if, if you with us, if you go to a Russian prison. You don't have it's a you don't have any lawyers. You don't see anybody. You're just in there wet, waiting to die. But that's not the case. His lawyers can come in, check him out. Send no, I mean, him. like according to the law, they can see him uh, quite often actually. But uh, it's just it wouldn't like as same as like you can have you can get the doctor, you can get a lot of things. Uh, but uh, they uh, but one one of the things why he actually he. Um, uh went on a hunger strike is that uh like it really was like pretty much like a torture for for him you know for him personally like they wouldn't yes. allow a family in they wouldn't allow law lawyers in and also they had they did this thing uh that uh even before even though there was no precedent of this they they just said uh like uh, he was he defined in like you know like in 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 inside the prison code there is this kind of label that you put on the in uh, like an inmate which is kind of like he's uh, likely to escape or something like this <laughs> yeah. oh, even yeah. though he never actually he never actually tried to escape of course like uh, and they likely put, to uh, escape this, prison yeah yeah a Russian yeah, like prison really to easy escape. to escape yeah. I imagine yeah. <laughs> so he kind of, do they have like, a lot of breaks. Uh, so you have to kind of uh, keep a close eye on this one. And it's not just keeping a close eye. It literally means this. You're uh, every hour, a special uh, officer comes and checks on you. You have a minder. Loudly. So basically he was sleeping. Oh. And every hour, a guy would come and say, prisoner Navalny is like here. He's not escaped. Like, it's and, torture. Like, the time is unusual punishment. So basically he would be woken up every hour. Every At night. 3 a.m. in the morning? You're saying yeah, like yeah, yeah. Every hour, you're in the middle of a nice dream, you're dreaming. Yes, of yes. That chicken. Yes. <laughs> the guy wakes yeah. you up. Uh, oh so, uh, I, I that, thought he was on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was one of the reasons. So it's kind of like it's not just imprisonment, but it's also like torture. Um, I, yeah. I thought he went on a hunger strike to protest Amnesty International taking away his Prisoner of Conscience Award. I knew this was going to be it. I was about to remind you, Cap, if you didn't ask about this. This is, so, and I said, well, let's go out on this topic. Yeah. But, but yeah, what is that? Oh, like, did you? Did, was that news in Russia? That to even he got canceled. Navalny got canceled in Western society because of his. Uh, Anti past st statements. Was it anti LGBTQIA plus? No, 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 it's not LGBTQ. It's because uh, he was nationalist. a member of like a like it, it wasn't a nationalist nationalist movement as such, but it was uh, a movement. Uh, one of the uh, political uh, goals uh, of which was uh, to uh, stop or to kind of control illegal immigration and illegal immigration uh, from like other. Uh, Soviet republics such as like Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, and so on. Yeah, and so it was related to that. How he he kind of he he had did the statement, made the statements, uh, which were like kind of oh stop this kind of Tajiks coming here and so on. Something I just like find this. it hilarious. Cap and I were talking about this. This guy is in a Russian prison. He's on a mm -hmm. hunger strike. He's about to die, and then the internet in America cancels him. Well, because because Putin like, did like a. Yeah, I he, think the guy's been canceled enough. <laughs> He literally has been put in prison. I don't think he's the top of his mind. Poisoned, not, put in prison. Yeah, it's not I, what American bloggers think of his. Uh, like, like his actions aren't woke enough. Yeah, I, I mean, it's an amazing thing. Like Putin, I guess, did like almost like a disinformation camp. Got the, got the word out there to like our the bots on Twitter or whatever. So it was like a thing where people saw these statements, and then Amnesty yeah, International actually yeah. got pressured, probably mostly by bots and. And useful really? idiots. Yeah, because I, yeah, they I didn't even know this. They, can't, they took away his I knew, award. I knew, of the, I knew of their decision, but I didn't know that it caused such a thing in in uh, in uh, the United States. Oh. Probably, probably. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. People were like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow down, everyone. <laughs> this is the man you're supporting. Meanwhile, he's yeah. dying in prison. <laughs> yeah. Do not support this man. We need to get, until he apologizes, I think. But they're, like, I mean, they're, they're like, okay, so we can't support this man because he's against the people of Tajikistan. Yes, we have no idea what or where Tajikistan exactly. is. But he doesn't like them. It's horrible. They were I demanding hope. an apology. I said, I don't think he's going to hear your message. He's dying in prison. Nelson Mandela, for instance, for one, was was against uh, trans bathroom rights. I know that. <laughs> Cancel him next, bots.
<laughs> that's it. Yeah. That's the episode, everybody. Oleg, thank you so well, much for doing stay it. Stay safe, sure man. Thank you so much for, thank for you. continuing to do this podcast. I'm sure we'll have you back on soon. If I'm if I'm suddenly, if I'm suddenly, if you suddenly you can't reach me, you can start worrying. Yeah. If Sounds you end good. up in prison, yeah. promise to go on a hunger strike until we reach four hundred dollars in Patreon subscribers. Please. Yeah, I'll just go on a hunger strike. <laughs> I'll just go on a hunger strike until they bring the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be a very short hunger strike. Kaplan, uh, that's it. What should we do? Oh, uh, this is great, man. I mean, I think it's time we get lost. Get lost. <laughs>